Good day everyone, Dr Polaris here. In today's episode, we will continue our journey where we left off last time by examining Alter Earth's Paleocene fossil record, starting with North America. I hope you enjoy and tell me what you think in the comments below. The Paleocene, North America, 66 million years ago to 56 million years ago. The sun dawns on a new world. The ash clouds and choking volcanism have thankfully resided, but the damage has already been done. The earth is still significantly warmer than today. Much like the preceding Maastrichtian, a greater part of the world is covered in subtropical forests of pine, magnolia, redwoods and various fruit-bearing angiosperm plants. Life on earth is still recovering from the Maastrichtian Deccan Traps extinction event, and animal diversity remains rather modest, at least to the end of the epoch. In North America, the Wanagan Creek site, Bighorn Basin, and other fossil-bearing sites in Wyoming, New Mexico, and Colorado have revealed the state of post-Cretaceous dinosaurs in the region. In all, there are few species present, continuing the trend from the latest Cretaceous. The advanced Ceratopsians have narrowly avoided extinction, thanks to the sheer abundance of the Maastrichtian Triceratops. A possible descendant of this genus has been discovered in Rock Bench Quarry, Wyoming, in deposits dated to 33 to 61 million years ago, and named Navajo Ceratops superstes, or perhaps Triceratops superstes. The holotype consisted of a partial skull consisting of frill elements, parts of the lower mandible, and two large, relatively straight horns above the eyes. In many respects, this animal resembles the Maastrichtian Nedoceratops in both size and skull proportions, although the neck frill is more like that of Triceratops. Whether this animal is a descendant of Triceratops that has retained pedomorphic traits into adulthood, or a more basal member of Triceratops sini, is still under debate by paleontologists. Roaming the subtropical forests of late Paleocene, early Eocene, Greenland and Europe, Boreoceratops was a successful, long-lived genus. Descended from Triceratops, or a close relative, this 7-metre Ceratopsian possessed both a tall, elongated neck frill and straight, incredibly long brow horns. Boreoceratops regalis, found only on Ellesmere Island, is known from a partial skull and many smaller isolated bone fragments. In early Eocene Europe, the species B. europaeus dwelt in what we would now know in our timeline as France. For the duration of the Eocene, descendants of Boreoceratops would be the only members of Ceratopsidae present on the European continent. North American oviraptorosaurs, ornithomimosaurs and pachycephalosaurs have been reduced to a handful of genera each over the course of the period. Oviraptorosaur remains in North America are rare, with the genus Canochirus represented by partial forelimb elements, and a giant, as yet undescribed, Elmisaurine, known as the Clark Forkian Oviraptorosaur. The former is a close relative of Anzu Wiley, albeit somewhat smaller at an estimated 2.5 metres in length, and found in Wyoming 63 million years ago. The latter, discovered in Montana, is known from only one fairly complete specimen dating to 57 million years ago and measuring 6 metres in length. Ornithomimosaurs, on the other hand, were fairly common at this time. The genus Ornithomimus seems to have survived past the Maastrichtian, producing the new species Ornithomimus concors, grandis, hatcheri and others. A close relative, Marquesaurus velox, dwelt in Texas and New Mexico 61 to 56 million years ago and would give rise to the widespread Eocene cassowary mimids. Both of these animals have been found in large numbers, which suggests prominently herbivorous diets and possible group behaviour. The formidable club-tailed ankylosaurs have vanished, both from Asia and North America, although nodosaurids have made it through. Thus far, only one confirmed nodosaur has been discovered from Paleocene North America, Duropelta rooseveltii, from the Wanagan Creek Formation. Duropelta is known from several individual finds, including one semi-complete skeleton 
and a more partial specimen consisting of a skull, five neck vertebrae, and a partial left femur. Numerous osteoderms from nodosaurids have been found across the entire temporal range of the Paleocene, although none have proven distinctive enough to create any new genus. Somewhat more specious were the hadrosaurs. Six genera have been discovered in total. The largest and most spectacular of these was Ancerititon maximus, a massive 14 metre long descendant of Edmontosaurus from the later Paleocene. A smaller relative, Telmatohadros, inhabited the Wanagan Creek area of North Dakota at roughly the same time. Interestingly, recent finds from the Bug Creek Anthill site indicate that Edmontosaurus itself survived the climate chaos at the end of the Cretaceous and lived on into the early Paleocene. Cretosaurians are also represented by two genera, Altyrhinosaurus and Romanorhinus. The former was found in Danian deposits, and the latter was a contemporary of Boreoceratops in the late Paleocene slash early Eocene of Canada and Europe. A single genus has also been unearthed from Bighorn Basin, Utah, that seems to be recovered outside both Sauralophinae and Lambiosaurinae, and may even turn out to be a more basal hadrosauroid, but it has yet to be formally described. This may represent an animal of Appalachian ancestry or an immigrant from Asia. Lambiosaurians are notable in their total absence from the North American fossil record at this time. Smaller ornithischians were also present in this new world. Descendants of Thessalosaurids were becoming widespread in the Paleocene and began to show signs of diversification. One lineage, seemingly tracing their ancestry back to Thessalosaurus itself, was comprised of fairly large, bulky animals that seemed to have preferred swampy forest habitats. A couple of genera belonging to this group have been recovered from North America, although only one has been officially named, Morassosaurus brachypus. This Thessalosaurid inhabited the Wanagan Creek site 60 million years ago, in large numbers, making up about 10% of all dinosaur specimens found there. A closely related group were treading the more conventional path of speed and burrow digging, the numerous rhododromids. Sharing adaptations for a cursorial lifestyle with their orodromian ancestors, the rhododromids first appeared during the late Paleocene at numerous sites across western North America. Where they came from is something of a mystery. Orodromians are not known from the fossil record of latest Cretaceous North Western North America. An Appalachian origin is most likely, although fossil sequences from that part of North America are rare and poorly preserved. Regardless of this, rhododromines quickly asserted themselves and began to dominate the small, speedy herbivore niche that ornithischians have been so good at occupying since the late Triassic. Five genres have been discovered so far, including Rhododromeus, Celeriophosaur, and Hyliodromeus. All of these were roughly two metre long, and probably browsed on fruit, leaves and shrubs growing close to the forest floor. These animals would also last for a pretty long time, only dying out at the end of the Eocene period. Hunting these smaller herbivores were the famous dromaeosaurs, who also survived the extinction event with minimal losses. During part of the Danian stage of the Paleocene, the forests of western North America were stalked by the 4-metre dromaeosaurian Puecoraptor atrox. This fierce, robust animal seems to have been a close relative of Dakotaraptor and Dromaeosaurus, particularly in aspects of the skull and in the large size of the teeth. The Wanagan Creek site has produced a couple of Dromaeosaur genera, including the Velociraptorian Lamoraptor wanagani and the lean Tichy Gracilivanator celer a close relative of Sauronithalestes. One particularly interesting genus was the three metre long Boreonychus with many, many species attached. This animal had an incredibly wide distribution across the northern continent, with many species found in North America, Europe and Asia. Why this genus ach achieved such a wide range is unknown, but it may have to do with the fairly uniform, small herbivorous dinosaur fauna across the northern hemisphere at this time.
The close cousins of the dromaeosaurs, the troodontids, are also present in Paleocene deposits, albeit with a very patchy fossil record. Numerous teeth belonging to advanced troodon-like animals have been uncovered from the Danian deposits of western North America. Dubbed Sauromalodon serratus, the teeth of this genus demonstrate serration similar to those of living iguanas. This suggests that descendants of Troodon continued to pursue an increasingly omnivorous lifestyle. The only fairly complete Troodontid remains from Paleocene North America come from the Thanetian sites in Wyoming and southern Canada. From several well-preserved skeletons, paleontologists can build up a clear image of this most unusual of animals. Named Phytodontosaurus inexpectatus, this odd troodontid possessed a rather long neck, small finely serrated teeth, and somewhat stocky hind limbs and robust forelimbs. It was also very large for a troodontid, measuring 4 metres in length and weighing an estimated 150 kilograms. This suite of anatomical features suggests an animal with a predominantly herbivorous lifestyle, a radical shift in niche probably triggered by the spread of warm tropical forests caused by the change in climate due to the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum. Also, the extinction of the Therizinosaurs by the early Paleocene clearly left niches vacant for other dinosaurs to step into. In fact, Phytodontosaurus shows many parallels to Falcarius, the progenitor of the Therizinosaurs from the early Cretaceous. Finally, a mention of the apex predators of the Paleocene must be made. Advanced tyrannosaurs arose in the late Cretaceous and rose to dominate the large predator niche in Asia and North America. After the Maastrichtian extinction, this pattern continued unabated. The North American fossil record of the Paleocene preserves the remains of several tyrannosaurid genera. The earliest of these, Dinotyrannus nova mexicanus, was found in 63 to 60 million year old deposits in New Mexico and at the Wanagan Creek site. Overall, this animal was very similar to T. rex, albeit slightly smaller and with a proportionately longer skull. In the late Paleocene, Dinotyrannus is replaced by its descendant genus Sarcovanator, a massive and successful animal as large as T. rex, with a temporal range stretching into the Eocene of both Asia and North America. Living alongside this great beast was a significantly smaller tyrannosaur, Prosimo tyrannus latinathus. This was a much smaller animal, measuring 7.5 metres in length and weighing roughly 2 tonnes. Not only that, this genus also possessed a particularly wide skull and disproportionately large, dense teeth. These features indicate an animal that was quite frequently scavenged and crushed bones, separating it ecologically from its far larger contemporary. Prosimo tyrannus was also more basal than Tyrannosaurus, nesting in the position on Tyrannosaur phylogenetic trees close to Nanuxaurus. This suggests that the ten descendants of small Nanuxaurus-like Tyrannosaurs survived the end of the mass Christian extinction event. Thank you for watching everyone. Next week I'll be uploading a video about another African cryptid, the horned Emila Untuka. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as it will really help my channel to grow. I really appreciate every view that I get. See you next week. Cheerio.